Hello everyone, excited to be here. So there's our marketing slide for my face, so let's keep that one. Uh, I'm going to talk about companies' functional ability in cyber attacks. And uh, we have been talking today quite much about machine learning, AI, and these kind of uh, next-gen things. I think blockchain is missed today. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that much about machine learning and AI. I will be talking about when the incident will happen, how you can have shorter reaction times from the attack to the mitigations. And uh, I have one slide that is a bit of a cliche, but the cliches are quite often true. So many keynotes have been talking today that the breach will happen, or the breach has already happened in your company. It can't be a minor breach, it can't be a major breach, but it, it will happen in some time. And nowadays that we are talking about IoT, 5G, everything is basically connected. We have a public cloud, we have our old uh, legacy environments on-prem, we have a hybrid, hybrid solutions, but basically everything is connected. But it doesn't mean that everything is secured. So, basically, now that we have all things in cloud, we have all things in on-prem, but nothing is secured. So, the assumption the breach will happen. But what we do in a company when things happen, and why it takes such a long time to react, and I'm going through some key points. So one is, of course, the blind spots. Many companies are going through the cloud transformation. They are moving to the public cloud. And uh, basically, we don't have our firewall-protected environment anymore. So we have assets in cloud. We have assets uh, everywhere. Our users are moving, but we need to have this kind of a comprehensive picture of our threat landscape. So we need to minimize the blind spots in our environment to be able to react fast. Second thing is that we have already in many uh, speeches today uh, tackled is the alert fatigue. So we have so many alerts. Companies can have a SOC team, internal SOC, third-party SOC, and they can have 10,000 100,000 alerts, but they are lacking the ability to have the critical alerts from the mass of the alerts. So the security analysts, they will become numb when there are too many alerts. So we, that's why we need the machine learning and the automation. And one is, of course, the lack of automation in many companies today. So. We have different kind of tools, but we need to integrate the tools. Average enterprise has more than 25 different kind of security tools in their toolbox. But many of the tools are not connected in any way. So we want to have proper tools that are integrated. Luckily, many vendors today are integrating their tools to communicate with other vendors. But the fact is that many companies have tens of tools that are not talking to each other. And that's why also the reaction times when something happens is lack of the proper tools. One is also the training. It's not about, uh, it's not all about the technology. It's about the incident response training. Because in companies, you train to restore your, how to restore your backups. If your domain controller breaks down, how to restore it. You have a disaster recovery plan. You have also need to have 
this kind of incident response training. You need to have scenarios. You can have tabletop trainings, you can have more robust trainings, but you need to have, and the training needs to be continuous. Because if you haven't trained something and the incident happens, it will take time when people are thinking that where to call, where to contact when the incident is at hand. And also the context, that's pretty important today. So we have incidents, we have events all across our company, but we need to connect the dots because without context, we are missing the most critical incidents. And when we are missing the most critical incidents, we cannot react as fast as we could. So we need to add one layer more, and that's the context. So how we can accomplish? We have gone through the steps that why we have so long reaction times. One is the offensive side. So uh, Virya had a speech about offensive approach, red teaming. I would say that we need, we need that. But we need to have some kind of traps in our environments. We need to misguide the attacker because time is money. We need to have basically honey pots, honey tokens, honey credentials. And the more we can misguide the attacker, the more we have time to mitigate the threat. So make it hard for the criminal. Like I said, we need the tools. We need to have tools that integrate. Many companies, many vendors have today these kinds of SOAR platforms, security orchestration platforms. And that's because we don't have tools that integrate, but with using the SOAR platform, we can integrate things. We can have automated playbooks when incident happens. We can disable the AD account. We can blacklist IP address in a firewall. We can send requests to the endpoint to be isolated from the network. So one platform basically to rule them all. And without that platform, we don't basically have the integrations. We need also the visibility. And we need it to all sides. We need it in the public cloud. We need the visibility in our endpoints. We need the visibility in our applications. So we need to lock things. But I, I'm not saying that we need to lock everything. Of course, you have a lock management for the compliance. But if you think about security incidents, we need to lock the important things. So use the logging and lock things in your public cloud and also lock things in your endpoint, because that's maybe 90% of the attacks start from the endpoint when someone clicks something. And say no to silos. Many companies have their own security uh, team, but they still have a network team, they have a server team, endpoint team, and they are not talking to each other. And when the incident happens, you need to break those silos so that everyone can join to solve the incident as quickly as possible. And for the context, we need to reach alerts. Uh, I was, I think it was September, I was in London where Trent Micro's Rick Ferguson had one kind of a keynote speech there, and he had a, one good example for the context. Because if you, have, if you don't have the context, you will miss things. And the example was that if you have basically a data center, you have a cleaning lady who has access to the data center to clean things. She will have the access card. She can enter the building. She can enter the data center. But instead of cleaning things, she opens the terminal and is accessing your database with your database admin account. 
takes the data, leaves the building. Everything is basically okay. The cleaning lady had the access. She had the credentials to go in that building. And the database admin had the access to go to the database. But if we have the context and we connect the dots, we can see that probably that was not that okay. So we need to have context. And if you think about when incidents happen, of course, everyone knows that we need to know our assets. We need to know what assets our company has, how many endpoints we have, how many network devices we have, so on. But not all assets are equal. The little dinosaur is much more crucial than the big one. And what I want to say is that know your high value assets, know your critical assets, because your business can survive basically if some of your workstations are lost or broken or some of your test application servers are uh, cryptic by ransomware. But if your basically application server that runs your mill and the production line is down, that will cause seriously money loss for your business. And that affects your business. So know your critical assets. And have a security baseline. Of course, you need the security baseline for all of your assets, but you need to have more stricter baseline for the high critical assets. Like, for example, you may have a safe in your house where you keep all your valuables, but you don't store your socks in the safe. So not all assets need to have hardened the same way. And the fact is that it's basically all about the money. If you think about targeted attacks, I know that many companies think that no one cares about our data. And that can be true. But it's not basically, it is the data. But the criminals, of course, want to make money. So to make money, you need to spend money. So if, you, if, if, if I'm a criminal and I want to attack to a company, I need to spend money to perform the targeted attack. And the harder you make it for the attacker, the more the attacker needs to spend money to attack your environment. And that way, it, it can be so that your company is not that uh, delicious target anymore when you have hardened things more than others. And what I really want to, that you get from the presentation is that I know that many companies have their IT budget. They have, maybe some have their security budget. Uh, and uh, they have like a million euros to spend. But you don't need to always have new technology. You don't need to buy new licenses. Because there is so much already in the environment that you could enhance. So use what you already have and configure it better. For example, if you have a Windows domain, like I said, I'm, I'm not here to talk about machine learning, blockchain, a bit cyber, yes. But why not to already enhance that you have? These are super simple examples. If you have a Windows domain, Windows 10 workstations, use the features that you have on the Windows 10. There are new builds that have new security features that if you don't, if you just, just using the defaults, you are not getting it. Why not you use AppLocker? You don't need 500 rules. 
you can start with four, and then you are more secure. Why not to whitelist things? Why always blacklist? Why not to just do it in an email gateway that let's just block everything and allow the stuff we want? PDF, doc files, Excels. That's about it. If someone really needs to send you a zip file with some kind of a super important ini file, use another tool for that. Review your GPOs. It, it basically may surprise you. I know that companies have security reviews, timely based. Go through the GPOs also, like you go through the firewall, wall, firewall rules, and you can find things to enhance or unnecessary GPOs. So use the things that you already have and use the features more efficiently and more secure way. How we can achieve then the ultimate goal and what is the ultimate goal? Is it the 100% secure environment? We all know that that's impossible to accomplish. But I dare to say that you can have five times, ten times more secure environment by using what you already have, hardening, identifying your critical assets, training your people, going through the cybersecurity training and the incident response training a couple of times a year, four times a year, and also using the tools that integrate. With these kind of little steps, I think environments are more safe. Thank you.